Hello everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful day. My name is Kyle Collins and I will be taking you through my second physics 2211 lab. In this video, I will go through the purpose of the lab, explain key concepts, show you the experiment and explain what happened, a computational model of what occurred in the experiment using GlowScript, then I will compare the graphs and explain, answer lab questions and conclude. The purpose of this lab is to observe the motion of an object that is dropped from the rest as it falls somewhat slowly straight down. For this, we are going to need to understand a few things such as drive force and gravitational force, which I will explain in the next slide. I will conduct an experiment which can help us see this in action, and I will compare it to other graphs. So key concepts. First, we're going to need to know the momentum principle, better known as Newton's second law. In last week's lab, Newton's second law was important, and in this week, it will be a key factor as well. The law states, force applied to an object is directly proportional to the rate of change of its momentum and it occurs in the direction in which the force is applied. We also need to know how to calculate net force, which can be calculated by the change in momentum over the change in time. Next, we can look at the force of gravity, which is negative mass times gravity, multiplied by the direction vector. Gravity is going to be 9.8, which is defined by the gravitational law, and if you are wondering why there is a negative sign, it is because the object is falling towards Earth going down. It is only right that the gravitational force of the object is proportional to its mass because if not, things would just instantly drop or barely drop down. It wouldn't make sense. Drag force will be pushing up in the opposite direction of the gravitational force. It is a significant factor that opposes the object's motion as it falls through a liquid, typically air. When an object falls through a fluid, two main forces act on it, gravitational force and drag force. The formula for the drag force is negative proportionality constant times the absolute value of the object's speed squared times the velocity direction. With these two accounted for, we can add them together and we will get our net force. Bro. So in this experiment, we will be using the same stress ball that we used last week. I will need to use my phone to record and I will be using a tape measure to accurately get the distance the ball is dropped. Here is the video of me dropping the ball. You can see it is exponential curve going down. We are able to get the time by subtracting the last time and the initial time. We know our initial position is 0, 0, 0 because that's where we started. We know the initial velocity is going to be 0, 0, 0 because we didn't apply any force at that, at that point. Here is our code for the computational model without drag. I had to edit the ball's mass to 0 0.09979 kilograms and the change of velocity vector to all zeros and the position vector to all zeros which we found earlier. I also had a chance to delta t to 1 over 60 because I filmed in 60 frames per second. I also had to make the gravity negative 9.8 instead of 9.8 because it is going down towards the earth. I also had to change the time to 0.584 which was our time for subtracting the last time and the initial time. So then I also had to create gravity force vector uh, and we made that equal our net force. So we basically just had that equal itself. And then we use the position update formula and the velocity update formula. Here are the graphs side by side. The predicted one is orange and our data is the blue. Reading this data, that means the graph on the predicted path is better representation of what is supposed to happen. However, in every experiment, we have to account for error. Air conditioning could have pushed down the ball. I could have dropped the ball too harshly or the tracking was off. All these factors could have contributed to the end result. Here's our code for the computational model with drag. I had to change the drag constant and I had to add the drag force formula to the code, which allowed us to get our net force over here. So earlier we found out net force equals force of gra gravity versus our drag force. Here are all three lines plotted side by side. Looking at the graph, we can tell that the model with drag is the best curve we could have because it's more accurately predicted. Adding in the drag force instead of having it without it, it would make the data more realistic and we we're able to compare that that line with our observed line. Questions. Examine the velocity versus time predicted by your models with and without drag. Which models, if any, predict a terminal velocity? So the model with drag is the one we're looking for. Because it is the one that reaches a point with no acceleration, that would be the best to predict if it had a ter terminal velocity. Imagine that the object was initially thrown downwards. Would the terminal velocity in this case be the same or different from the case where the object was initially dropped from rest? It would stay the same because no matter what happens, it would balance out with gravity. As long as the objects remain the same, the, const the terminal velocity would also remain the same. I hope you understand everything today. 
Thank you for watching this lab. Until next time.